Hi everybody, welcome back. My name is Chris Blakebrook, part of the Solutions team. Today we're going to look at our ICMS server. Our ICMS server is used to deploy, configure and manage endpoints globally from one central system. Today's video will cover the agenda of the ICMS, the web page look at and navigation, where we show you the tree on the left hand side. So once the ICMS software has been installed, um, we click on our URL link um, and as you can see there is a username and password. We click enter on the username and password and if we work our way across the top bar you can see that logged in, you can see that I'm logged in as at cmsengineer.speakerbus.com. There's the account, the logout or login functionality. Um, work our way across, there is a contextual help functionality which I'll explain more later. There's a search option and on the left hand side there's a navigation tree. Within the user functions, if I click on the users, you can see that this is a populated database. Um, from the beginning, if you haven't got a populated database, you'd have to build this database up. But here you can see what users I have currently in my database. Alternatively, I can click new and I can add a new user. Uh, I will come onto that later on today. Um, as we keep working our way down the navigation tree, we can go into policies. And again, if we're not sure what the policy is, I can go over to my help functionality and in there you can see that it explains what the policies are and why we use them. Again, I will talk in more detail later on in this video. There are some defaults, and these are how we just want to set our templates up and our default privileges and our default preferences. Now we enter the templates. The groups, do we want to add users to certain groups? What do we want to call them groups? corporate directory, do we want to add all our users into the corporate directory, we also sync with AD and LDAP to import users, and then we add partitions, partitions are like securities, we can put certain security to certain users or groups. The next part we hit is devices, now devices is where we show all our desk stations, so here at ID808 is our physical turret, and again it shows that that turret has been announced in, it shows the IP address the type that it is and the firmware that it's running and who is actually seated on that device. We have gateways, as we explained before, gateways that deliver our private circuits. In this occasion we have two of our IG330 gateways. The names, again what sites, what core region they work on, IP address and the MAC address of that gateway. Um, here if we use it, our iDucks or our cloud based products, again this is indicated here. You can see that we have servers announced into iManager for the use of our iDucks. And again, we have policies and defaults. The core cool service parts of the navigation tree is our PBX. Um, if we click on our PBX, you can see here we have Avaya, our own ICS, and also Call cool Manager. But we can register with most PBXs using a SIP trunk. Uh, in this case, as I said, Avaya, Call cool Manager, and our own ICS. So if I click on our ICS, there you can see what port's required, the IP address of our ICS, our inbound LEMPs, and LEMPs, and our SNMP monitoring. If we go down to PBX appearances, this is where we can assign DDI numbers to particular users. As we click onto the network part of the navigation tree, you can see that we are entering sites. If we look at the help sign, you can see that sites represents a location where the speaker bus ICS equipment is installed. In this case we have DCs, so DCA, DC and DCB, and we have users who are seated in the DCA and users who are seated in the DCB. Call regions, again you can see that a call region is a part of that network which is associated to that site. For example a site of DCA will have its own call region and the site of DCB will again have its own call region. Voice services, now these are our hoots, so whether it's an internal hoot or an external hoot, an automatic ring down on a private wire, a manual ring down on a private wire, or an intercom functionality, these are all created within our voice services. We can then provision them to individual users or groups of users. And finally, network services, these are all the additional components that we need to add into our iSeries solution whether it's a voice recorder, it's a TFTP server, an MTP server, or even our iManager 
to make our solution function and work. Uh, if we click on the security tab, under here you can see we have administrators. Uh, within the administrator tab at the moment you can see the only administrator I have is actually a CMS engineer, which I use to log into. And if I click on to that engineer the name and I click on the roles assigned to that engineer, you can see that the two roles I had are security administrator and assistant administrator. And again, from our help, you can see what's required and what's the difference in the levels of administration and security. And finally, if we click on system, um, if we click on preferences, preferences shows the iTurret layout extension. Um, so from the basic turret, we can add expansion units and from here we can see how we like the expansion units configured. Um, audit log, as you can see, we can there are a number of audit logs and from there again I can export so CT users I can export back to a file of my choice and where it is click OK and that will export that into an Excel format I can interrogate if I don't want to export the report I can view the report so I can click on there and it can tell me everything that's within that report 